The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In a recent talk, Thomas I. Parkinson, president of the Equitable Life Assurance Society, remarked... Self-reliant citizens living in their own mortgage-free homes are the cornerstone of a free country. That is why, of all the manifold services rendered by the Equitable Society to its four million members, one which I rank near the top in importance is the Equitable's Assured Home Ownership Plan. In about 14 minutes, I'll be back to tell you homeowners about the Equitable Society's famous Assured Home Ownership Plan that President Parkinson considers so important. Tonight, FBI file number 299. Its subject, Black Market Babies. Its title, The Temporary Father. One of the oldest proverbs is the one about the grass always being greener in the other fellow's yard. The plumber thinks the bricklayer has the easier job. The bricklayer thinks the carpenter does less labor. And so on up and down the line, for each has misconceptions about the other's work. Just as the general law-abiding members of the public have many misconceptions about crime and criminals. One of those mistaken beliefs will be treated with in tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The error of picturing the criminal only as a lean, hard-faced man with a cigarette angling out of the corner of his mouth and a pistol on the tip of his forefinger. There are other types, types who do not commit armed robbery, men and women who don't operate through the use of terror, for they sell a different commodity. They are the merchants of misery. Tonight's file opens late one afternoon in an eastern city. As the bartender of a corner saloon stands wiping the mahogany, the front door opens and a man enters, clumsily pushing a baby carriage. Now, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Quiet, that's a good baby. Quiet, Wilbur, quiet, will you? Here, go against the bottle. Yeah, that's it. Hello, Herbie. Give us a shot of rye. Sorry, Charlie. I can't serve you. Why not? You can read the sign. Look, intoxicating liquors will not be served to minors. It ain't for him. You're with the kid. The law said if there's a minor in the party, I can't dish up the hard stuff. Okay, okay. I'll go someplace else. Go ahead. Oh, now, baby. Goochie, 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 goochie. Shut up. Hit the bottle again, will you? That's better, that's better. Hello, Charlie. Oh, hi, Fred. Where'd you get the added starter? Let's not even talk about it. It ain't yours. If it was, I'd drown it. It's my wife's sister's kid. How'd you get to be the stable boy? Mary and her sister went on a cruise. And they left the kid with you? No, with an aunt of theirs. And they ain't out of the harbor before the aunt gets sick, calls me, she can't take care of them, so I'm the poor slob who gets stuck. Quit throwing that phony charm at me. Hey, Charlie, how about buying you a drink, huh? I'd love it, but it can't be arranged. Not in there. Why not? They won't save me with the kid along. Oh. Well, I'll see you later. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Say, I got an idea. How about if I get a bottle and we go over to my joint? We can drink it up over there, hmm? Well, I don't... Now, look, look, I've been waiting for three days to carry on a conversation with somebody who don't cry or gurgle. Come on, what do you say? Move over, I'll help you push. Oh, now, Wilbur, Wilbur, will you please, will you please? A 
I'm telling you for the last time, go to sleep. What was wrong with him, Charlie? Well, the little darling needed a fresh diaper. And this little darling needs a fresh drink. Yeah, hey. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> Say, you know what happened to me on account of that monster? I had to turn down three jobs. No kidding. You read about the stick-up on Broadway last night at the gas station? Yeah. Well, they are. I was booked to drive the getaway car. Percentage deal. Could have made me 600 bucks. That kid ain't worth that much melted down. <coughs> hey, Charlie. I just thought of something. How long's your wife and sister gonna be away? Oh, about two weeks. Well, that should be time enough. Hmm? For what? I think I got a deal for you. Yeah? Well, I just got through telling you I can't work with the kid around. This includes the kid. You want him to pull a heist? No, no, this is a legitimate touch. A swindle. Oh, yeah? What's the deal? You know Annie Johnson? Yeah, the red-headed dame. Uh-huh. Well, she's been working a racket with a guy. I don't know the full rundown on it, but they use a kid. You interested? Well, if it don't get the kid in trouble. I wouldn't want his mother to come home and find him clobbed up in the city clink. It ain't that kind of a deal, Charlie. Now, I'll tell you what. Annie's working at the Broadway dance hall. Grab the kid. We'll wheel over and see her right now. Come in and dance, folks. Fifty beautiful girls. Fifty. Okay, keep moving, Mac. Talking to me? Yeah. My friend's inside. I'm waiting for him. Not with that kid, you ain't. Why not? How do you think it looks? People come to dance and see a baby carriage out front. Oh, you're afraid somebody will think the joint's respectable. Oh, Charlie, I'm sorry I took so long. That's okay. This is Annie. Hi. Well, hello, Annie. Hello. Will you get moving? Okay, okay. Gee, what a cute kid. Is it a he or a she? You ever hear of a girl named Wilbur? Think you can use the kid, Annie? Sure. Look, uh, if you don't mind, suppose you tell me what the deal is first. Oh, uh, do you know Harry Fulton? Yeah, I know him. I'm working with him. Doing what? Selling kids. The deal is cold. Well, let me explain. You already have. Say, have I sold this kid? I'd have to use the dough for a tombstone. Charlie, they don't really sell the kids as a gimmick. Yeah, we sell them and take them right back again. I still don't like it. Charlie, the kid would only be gone one afternoon. And Annie tells me there's 300 clams in it for you. Huh? Wait, will you throw that at me again? You pick up 300. Huh? You sure the kid comes back in one afternoon? He always has. Well, why don't you get the kid now? We laid him off. Why? He got too old. How old was he? Eighteen months. Well, how do you like that? Eighteen months old and a has-been. What do you say, Charlie? Like to make a deal? Well... You hear that? The kid goes for it. Uh, okay, it's a deal. The following day at the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor approaches the desk of Agent in Charge Porter. I've got a job for you, Taylor. All right, sir. I picked you because you worked on that black market baby case last year. The Marshall case? Yes, that's right. Hmm. I know you've got a lot of days off coming, and I promise you could take a few between the holidays. Oh, but, I uh... can wait, Mr. Porter. <laughs> Thanks. It's another baby racket. Yeah, it's a nice time of year for it. This one's operated by a middle-aged man and a young woman. The woman contacts people who want to adopt a baby, tells them she has one, and offers it for sale. Well, that pretty much follows the other pattern. Yes, it does. The people then visit the woman's apartment to see the baby. If they like it, she sets a price, which must be paid in cash. When the couple returns with the money, the woman turns over the baby. Mm -hmm. Then the door opens, and in comes her partner. No, what for? Well, he poses as an officer of the Federal Adoption Bureau and arrests everybody in the apartment. The Federal Adoption Bureau? Uh, it sounds official. He shows legal-looking papers, which he claims identify the baby as kidnapped. Now you say he arrests the legitimate couple, too? Yes. Yeah, his accessories after the fact. Uh -huh. He then allows himself to be bribed. Let's him go. Well, that's a new law. Yes, it is. We got complaints from two couples this morning. 
Here are their names and addresses. All right, sir. Interview them. See what you can get. Hey, Herb. Yeah, Herb? Throw a hunk of ice uh, in this drink, will you? Uh, okay. Thanks. Hello, Charlie. Have a drink. Never mind a drink. I've been looking all over for you. What are you so excited about? The weather's clear, the track's fast, and we're winning. Hey, look, it's all off. What? I gotta get the kid back. Okay, Annie will be finished with him in about an hour. I can't wait that long. Why not? Mary and her sister got back this morning. You said they'd be gone two weeks. Mary's aunt sent a wire to the boat saying she got sick and turned Wilbur over to me. What did they do, swim back? The boat stopped someplace and they flew back. Will you please tell me where Annie's got the kid? In that apartment she rented. Well, let's go get him. But we're in a stretch. Another hour and we got the dough. We can't wait. Not even an hour? Look, look, if I don't come up with Wilbur real quick, Mary and her sister will have me for dinner. Come on. May I see you a minute, Mr. Porter? Oh, yes. Come in, Taylor. Come in. I've interviewed those baby swindle victims. No, did you get anything? Well, the man in the combination is Harry Fulton. Who's he? He's a known swindler, sir. I took the confidence album down with me, and both couples positively identified Fulton. Oh. He got any local record? Yes. His last arrest here was for selling Bibles to the next of kin of servicemen missing in action. Mm-hmm. How about an address? Well, he moved a couple of months ago. Landlady at his old place didn't know where to. Did you get anything on the girl? Yes, sir. A good description, and the fact that she went by the name of Jane Adams. We're having a check of police files made on her now. Uh-huh. You sent out an alarm yet on Fulton? Yes, sir, about an hour ago, just after we filed a complaint. Good. I think I also came up with another piece of his pattern. Oh, what's that? Well, both payoff appointments were set for early in the day so the fake arrest could be made while the banks are still open. Does Fulton go to the bank with the victims? That's right, sir, so they can withdraw the bribe money. Yeah. Uh, have additional copies of Fulton's picture made up and send one to every bank in the city. All right. And let me know when you hear anything. <laughs> This is the apartment here. Just hope we're not busting in on a racket. Look, Herb, all I want's the kid. Knock on that door, will you? Okay. Come in. Hi, Annie. Oh, hello, Fred. Hi, Charlie. I was afraid we might be busting in on the swindle. Oh, no. Harry didn't even show up. I've come here to get the kid, Annie. But I told you, Harry didn't show up. We ain't. Waiting for Harry. Charlie, if you don't wait for Harry, you don't get paid. It's more important that I get the kid home. Now, where is he, Annie? I just told you Harry didn't show up. I don't want Harry. I want the kid. But the customers did show up. Customers? The people we were doing business with. Will you please make sense? I'm not interested in who you're doing business with. I want the kid. And I'm trying to tell you Harry didn't show up. But the people came and gave me the money. So what? So when they paid me, they took what they paid for. Do you mean... Uh-huh. They took little Wilbur. Oh, no. We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official file which shows how your FBI helps promote America's security. Now a special message to homeowners. Does your home have a mortgage? Is it a truly modern mortgage? A modern mortgage plan is one that gives you a method of paying off the mortgage years ahead of time. A modern mortgage plan gives you and your family real protection against foreclosure and disaster. Believe it or not, such a mortgage plan actually exists. It's the kind you get in the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. You may be one of a select group of homeowners who qualify for this money-saving, home-saving plan. It offers these four benefits. First benefit. This plan provides a painless way to pay off the mortgage years ahead of schedule. Yes, the big feature of this modern equitable plan is that it combines a low-cost first mortgage and life insurance protection. The insurance element 
creates a cash loan fund which increases steadily. Each year, the mortgage grows smaller and the cash loan fund bigger. My cash loan fund paid off my 20-year mortgage after about 14 years. Now I own my home free and clear. Second benefit, the cash loan fund is a friend in need when sickness or unemployment threaten home security. Surely was a big help when I was out of a job a few years ago. Third benefit, if the owner dies, his widow doesn't inherit a mortgage. She inherits her home free and clear. What's more, the Equitable Society not only cancels the mortgage, but also returns to the widow every cent her husband had paid to reduce the principal. Lastly, the mortgage draws interest not at 6, not at 5, but at 4%, and the closing costs are low. Naturally, a plan like this can't be offered to everyone. Your home must be in a neighborhood of stable realty values. Your Equitable Society representative will be glad to tell you whether you can qualify for this money-saving, home-saving, assured home ownership plan. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Temporary Father. The racket described in tonight's case from the files of your FBI is going on with slight variations in different parts of the country this very minute. For during any national shortage, swindlers take quick advantage. Approximately 100,000 children were adopted in the last year, but for each child, there were 10 unsuccessful applications. Every year, the ratio of people refused by legitimate adoption agencies remains between 9 and 10 to 1. Some of those people refuse to wait and lay themselves open for swindles like the one you have heard in this evening's dramatization. This racket has one important thing in common with others. It could not exist without the patronage of seemingly legitimate people. The demand in certain fields is presently far greater than the supply. If you need any of those things, wait and get it legitimately or learn the unpleasant lesson so many others have painfully learned in the past. That lesson is, in one short sentence, you can't do business with crime. Tonight's file continues later that afternoon at the local FBI field office. Mr. Porter, that alarm on Harry Fulton paid off. Oh, already? Yes, the police arrested him only a half an hour ago. Where? Coming out of an office building on Broadway. Good. I just interviewed Fulton down at headquarters and got the whole story from him. How about that girl he was working with? Well, sir, he wouldn't talk about her, but the police files turned up an ident on her. No, what was it? Her real name is Ann Johnson. We learned that she worked at the Broadway dance hall as a hostess. I checked there, found she was fired last night. Did you give this information to Fulton? Yes, yeah, sir, but he, he still wouldn't talk about her. Yeah. Did the dance hall have her address? Yes, yeah, sir, but she moved last night, too. Have you sent out an alarm on her? Yes, sir. Good. Well, with Fulton in jail, all you have to do is pick her up. The racket should be dead. Hey, Herb. Yeah, Fred. Parlay some rye and ginger. Coming up. You want something, Charlie? Yeah. The kid. Look, that race is over. You blew it. It's gone. Worry about the next one. There ain't going to be any next one for me. Charlie, there's nothing else you can do. Annie said the couple's name was Jones, and you called every Jones in the phone book. Oh, why? Why couldn't she at least remember the guy's initials? I don't know. Here she comes. My wife? No, Annie. Oh, she's probably got another surefire deal for me. Bella, look what I found. What? Mr. Jones's card. The Mr. Jones? Yeah. All of a sudden, I remembered he gave it to me when him and Miss, Mrs. Jones came to the apartment. What's his address? His house or his office. Office? Do you think the kid's working? Where does he live? A 38 Sunset Drive. Sunset Drive? He must go to the $100 window. Let's go get the kid. Oh, wait. Charlie, 
do me one favor. Oh, ain't I done enough already? One more, that's all I ask. Well, what do you want? I got an idea. When we get out to the Jones joint, let me do the talking. Blessed. Off to sleep with you, darling. That's it. Hello, Mrs. Jones. Hmm? What? Well, how did you get in here? Uh, the butler let us in. But you promised you wouldn't try to see the baby again. And here the first day you... She didn't want to come. Who are these men? We're from the Federal Adoption Agency, Mrs. Jones. After we arrested this girl, she told us you had the baby. Arrested her? For kidnapping that child. But that's impossible. She's his mother. We've got papers to prove she's not. Like to see him? I... Oh, I, I guess not. Please get your hat and coat. What for? You'll have to go with us. Where? To women's prison. You're under arrest, too. Oh, I, 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 I'm what? Uh, seems to be quite a surprise to her, Fred. You can't arrest me. I didn't have anything to do with the kidnapping. Receiving stolen property is against the law. I'm sorry, Mrs. Jones. But don't speak to me. Get the baby, Charlie. Oh, don't. All right. Come on. Come on, little fella. Oh, now, hush, 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 sweetie pie. That's a good boy. Maybe I better take him out to the car. Yeah, go ahead. Take our kidnapping friend with you. You stand here? Just for a minute. I want to give Mrs. Jones a chance to put up some bail. Hello. Is that you, Taylor? Yes. This is Mr. Porter. Yes, sir. I'm afraid you'd better unpack your bags. <laughs> My leave canceled again? Yes, I'm afraid so. We were wrong about the baby racket being dead. Oh? I just had a complaint from a couple named Jones at 38 Sunset Drive. Oh, when were they swindled? Today, after Harry Fulton was safe in jail. Wow. Did you talk to them, sir? Just to Mr. Jones. When his wife told him why the baby wasn't in his crib, he got suspicious and called us. Was the Johnson girl mixed up in this? Well, from the description Jones gave, it must be her. Mm -hmm. She's working with two men this time. Any idea who they are? No, not yet. Mr. Porter, did you ask the uh, Joneses to come into the office? Well, he had to fly to New York on business, but his wife is waiting for you at their home. Oh, all right, sir. Could I have that address again, please? Yes, it's uh, 38 Sunset Drive. 38 Sunset Drive. All right, sir, I'll get right out there. I'll call you after I talk to her. And that's the whole story, Mr. Taylor. Well, now, Mrs. Jones, I'd like to go over it again for details, please. All right. Now, you haven't changed your mind about the girl in this picture being the one you did business with, have you? No, I'm positive. Mm -hmm. And you say the two men called each other by name? Yes. One was called Charlie, the other Fred. Mm -hmm. But can't you give me any description? I'm afraid not. Well, how were they dressed? I don't even remember that. You must understand, Mr. Taylor, I was so unnerved by what they said, I didn't pay any attention to their looks. Well, certainly that's quite natural, but unfortunately, it doesn't give us much to work on. I still find it hard to believe. Tell me, did um, either man touch anything in the room? Not that I remember. A doorknob, a drinking glass, an ashtray? No. The older one may have touched the crib when he lifted the baby, but that was all. Now, is that your crib? Yes. I bought it this morning after Mr. Jones and I decided to take the child. Yeah, I see. I bought the crib and the the playpen and, uh, well, everything you see except for the diapers. Oh. Who do they belong to? That girl had a supply and gave them to me. Oh, she did? Yes. Uh, is that important? Yes, it might be. Let's take a little ride, Mrs. Jones, and try and locate that baby. <laughs> The kids snoring? Well, it ain't me and Fred's driving. Well, must be the kids then. 
I still don't see why you couldn't stable him at your place, Charlie. Because Mary's note said to bring him to her sister's, and I ain't in any position to cross her. She can't be mad at you now. Why not? You're bringing the kid home. Yeah, what more can she want? Would you like a list? Uh, this is Bedford Street, Fred. Oh, look, for once she's right. Which way's the house? Turn left. What's the number? That's the place, the one with the lights on. Yeah. So long, Charlie. Oh, say, wait, wait. Come on in with me. Do we have to? What's the matter? Do you want to live forever? Uh, slide out, Annie. Oh, this is like going to the chair, except it'll be noisier. The trouble with you, Charlie, Just is you... please. Huh? Where are you taking that baby? Home. That's where he lives. What's it to you, mister? Plenty. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Yeah, huh? Mrs. Johns, come on to the light, please. Mrs. Jones! That's all three of them, Mr. Taylor. Fine. All right, Hamilton. You can take the baby into his mother. And I'll take you three downtown with me. I've got warrants here for your arrest. Charles Hamilton, Ann Johnson, and Fred Berry were tried and convicted in federal court on charges of impersonation. They were each sentenced to a three-year term in the penitentiary. Special Agent Taylor located the baby's home because he noticed the mark of a local diaper service on each diaper. The service quickly supplied the name and address of this particular customer. But these arrests did not wipe out the baby black market. Each year, legitimate agencies are forced to reject almost a million applications for adoption. The tawdry swindlers who prey on those disappointed applicants are everywhere. And like other swindlers, it is long past time they were put out of business. Americans work together in wartime to help defeat our foreign enemies. Let our joint New Year's resolution be that in 1951, we will cooperate as vigilantly against the current common enemy, the American criminal. Now, one last word to homeowners. Isn't one of your greatest ambitions in life to be able to say to yourself, no more mortgage on my house, I own it free and clear. Why not take steps to realize that ambition while you are still young? Ask your Equitable Society representative to show you how the Assured Home Ownership Plan provides for paying off the mortgage years ahead of time. Or send a postcard, care of this station, to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. File number 300. Its subject, a manhunt. Its title, The Helpful Corpse. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacy Harris. Others in the cast were Betty Blythe, Walter Catlett, Patty Chapman, Colleen Collins, Bill Conrad, Ed Gargan, John Sheehan, and Tom Tully. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The helpful corpse on This is Your FBI. Now, a listening reminder. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzy and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>